Hi, I'm Phil, and today I'm going to um, explore my uh, experiences and understanding of um, simulation as it is of today. So I'm going to use this mind map, and I'll also um, outline some of the features of how I'm capturing some of my ideas here using a mind map. So let's go into um, the overall description. We'll just open these up. And um, what we're interested in knowing is what is modeling? Uh, what programs, uh, techniques are used, what categories? And also from where we've been, we've been playing uh, and making games with uh, Microsoft MakeCode. And um, how does that relate to um, simulation and modeling? in the real world. So, and we'll have a look at what our goal is for today. Later on, I'm going to um, look at our combined experiences on how simulation has affected our lives, uh, particularly under the COVID-19 restrictions. And uh, we'll look at some of my experiences, some of the software I've used for simulation and uh, the projects we'll be uh, looking at. So um, let's have a look at um, what um, modeling is all about. So uh, in modeling, we're uh, trying to um, look at a real life phenomena and um, map that with um, mathematics and algorithms. And we're interested in the behavior, particularly of systems, and whether those systems um, are stable or not. And um, often we don't get a simple relationship with the parameters, they're nonlinear. And um, often the outcome and the behavior is hard to predict without using a model. And we can use the model to look at unsafe conditions and learn from the model. So they're often used for training. So um, the types of programs, um, there's um, two roles. There's the developer, which is perhaps the programmer, and um, he or she uses uh, mathematics to identify the parameters and relationships, and will use statistics to um, look at um, how these are aggregated and um, how you can get averages and trends. Then there's a phase of collecting data, uh, coding and validating that the models are used. But it's not only the developer, it's also there are users that will use models, uh, observe how they work and learn from the models. Uh, so uh, some of the systems that we're, um, we can model, uh, they include things like um, chemical reactions, nuclear fission, for example. And what's interesting, one of the first applications of simulation on a computer was uh, preparing for the atomic bomb in the Manhattan Project, where simulation was vital in getting an understanding of the um, processes for the atomic bomb. Today, we use um, simulation and modeling for predicting the weather. Uh, for things like um, power system behavior, uh, so that we don't have blackouts. Uh, we use it for electronic circuits, uh, look, understanding and um, being able to predict the outcome of chemical reactions. Uh, in megatronics, vehicle manufacturers use it to um, test new designs and particularly uh, safety features without having to go through dangerous ex um, experiments. Feedback control systems, and they're everywhere from a simple thermostat to uh, being able to uh, land on the moon. And um, things like heat pumps and a lot of the systems that we use in the uh, home, uh, modeling has been used in the design uh, to try and optimize the performance of these systems. And perhaps one of the more complicated uh, examples is uh, modeling uh, biological systems. And an example in uh, Switzerland is that there's a now a computer model of the whole brain right down to the um, chemical processes. 
So in business, models are used in project management where you uh, may want to fast track and get the project completed quicker or on time and in risk uh, management. And in uh, city planning, uh, models are used in transport, in building, and being able to uh, manage the pollution. So this is where we've been. We've played with Microsoft uh, Arcade, and um, and that's uh, on the on the uh, left. On the right, we've got um, more examples of um, computer modelling for the real world, including say traffic simulation, electronic circuits, and an example there is using uh, the uh, Tindercad program to uh, model the behavior of a um, electronic circuit. And uh, we're going to look at it uh, from the point of view of environmental models, and we'll have a look at recycling. Uh, I guess in the middle, there's um, a series of programs that helped um, develop that transition from the games to more realistic models. And um, one of the first to do that was a game called Life. Uh, and uh, that's worth looking at. A model I used was SimCity, and I played around with many war game programs. So um, the techniques which are used are to um, interact with the models, and um, we can change the parameters as the model progresses and get feedback from them. Uh, and an important aspect is being able to communicate and use it um, to tell other people uh, how the models work. And um, so we um, are using a degree of increasing realism. And an example of that is that we use the um, laws of motion when we're creating uh, a game that uses real objects that move. And we want to be able to um, visualize what the outcome is and uh, it helps with our understanding. So uh, some of the applications, um, these models are used in physics uh, and an area that I've um, been working in is medical physics. Uh, they're used in chemistry, biology, and uh, interesting areas in ecology and um, climate change and the uh, impact on the environment. Looking at uh, changes and um, is there an equilibrium obtained if we make any changes. Traffic engine, traffic um, in, is one of the examples in engineering, right through to um, biomedical and um, uh, being able to uh, control nuclear reactors. Manufacturing, and uh, even in human systems, we use um, simulation for economics, um, psychology, uh, right through to epidemiology. Um, predicting the impact of um, increasing populations. So they're just some of the um, areas where um, simulation has been used. Our goal is not to go into too much detail, but to observe uh, how the models work, play with those models, see where they're being used, and have a bit of a taste of some of the coding which is used behind the models. And also to comment on the experiences um, that we've used. So what's been our combined experience with doing all this? We'll just close this um, branch of our mind map and we'll look at their combined experiences. And um, with COVID-19, models were used to um, see what the impact would be if we just let it um, have a free for all compared to quarantining, uh, distancing, and um, using extensive isolation. And there's been quite a lot of models that have um, tried to um, uh, inform politicians and the public and uh, the medical people about what the outcomes of uh, various strategies could be. And uh, an example of that from um, the London College University uh, using a, uh, a tool called um, MathWorks or MATLAB. And uh, they were able to uh, have a look at um, the mobility of the population and the, uh, try to do some long-term forecasting uh, 
um, on uh, COVID-19. And we'll, we'll have a look at that tool later. So looking at some of my experiences, uh, when I was uh, an undergrad, right at my final engineering thesis, I um, did a, um, a study and wrote a report on modeling the human cardiovascular system. And uh, this was basically a mathematical model, and it considered the human body to be just a series of um, pipes uh, controlled by the, um, the heart, which was basically a pump. And uh, that model uh, was using um, knowledge of fluid dynamics. So uh, when I graduated, I joined the government architect and I worked on Westmead Hospital and I used models. And they, these were just basically taking the drawings, but animating those drawings from the architects when we were designing the hospital to make sure equipment worked, like x-ray equipment, would actually work in um, an x-ray department. Uh, and the second example was the um, purchase, right in the specification, right through to testing a radiotherapy simulator, which was used in cancer treatment, uh, using x-rays instead of gamma rays before the therapy for cancer treatment was applied. And I, in the government architect, I also um, did a bit of simulation while I was auditing the school security system project. And uh, this was a project adopted by the New South Wales Department of Education to um, minimize vandalism and um, destruction in uh, New South Wales public schools. And the simulation of uh, these projects um, didn't involve computers. The simulation was me pretending to be a, um, a uh, robber and going into the school. And in the case of um, working with the government architect on Westmead Hospital, it was just paper and pencil models with uh, scissors and cutting them out and uh, then uh, seeing if the equipment would all fit together. Uh, when I did get a computer, uh, the first thing was a um, calculator. So it was a programmable calculator, which I got 50 years ago. And one of the first things I did was simulate the landing on the moon uh, with that uh, calculator. And you can actually see I still have that calculator today. And you can see what the program looks like. Now here's the program. And you'll see that Newton's... Um, uh, the equations of motion are built into the program to make it work. And it only had a very simple uh, display. It just showed you the registers. Uh, so you had the fuel that was left, the acceleration. And if the acceleration was too much on landing, that you could consider that to be a crash land. And I moved on to other computers like the TRS-80 and the Epson. And I was interested in, um, games, uh, particularly Lunar Lander games, of all those computers. So in my work, I um, built a simulator uh, for a um, big machine, which was used for road testing. And uh, on the bottom photo there, you can see the um, machine, which is called ALF, or Accelerated Loading Facility. And um, we sold that to uh, China and the US government. Uh, but you can see this machine uh, was quite complex and was controlled by a computer. And before uh, the machine was finished, I started my programming, but didn't have the real machine. So I built the simulator to um, uh, emulate the performance of that machine. And then I moved on to traffic engineering, where I used um, simulators to uh, predict what the performance would be like uh, when you merge street traffic onto freeways to try and minimize congestion and um, improve the uh, traffic flow. But then I went to um, UTS, where we looked at um, the use of simulation uh, to um, look at the process of manufacturing and using computers, robots, conveyor belts, 
And the whole of the process of um, uh, making things in factories uh, to minimise uh, the stock and inventory and so that we could build things quicker. And in project management, I uh, simulated how a project um, could be managed uh, to um, maintain the budget and uh, make sure that you could uh, pay the bills on time and deliver the project to a client. And an example of that is the uh, Sydney Opera House, where um, these tools were used extensively to uh, minimise the overrun of costs. Okay, so now it's your turn. And uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, tell me if you've had any experiences with um, simulation. Um, perhaps it might be uh, using computers, or it might even be just role playing on a game uh, where you've been able to uh, simulate something in real life. Okay, um, we'll have a look at some of the software now. Okay, so we'll now have a look at some of the software. And um, the software I've used in transport, even before I use the real tools, I use lots of games to understand how aircraft and airports worked. And uh, I used um, a couple of those. One was uh, the Microsoft uh, Flight Simulator. And uh, there are programs in air traffic control that I use to try and understand how airports could um, uh, make sure that um, planes landed safely. And uh, I learned how to drive buses and trucks. And um, I was doing all of this about 20 uh, years ago and um, still maintained an interest about 10 years ago. And uh, one of the areas that I worked in was um, train simulation, where I became a train driver. And um, what was interesting about it was the, the graphics for driving the train were quite sophisticated, allowing me to drive on uh, terrains that look like the real thing. And then there was also the truck simulation program. And uh, it allowed me to learn how to drive a truck in Europe. And uh, it used the maps of Europe for uh, driving that truck. But a very interesting game was SimCity, where I was able to learn how to uh, develop transport systems um, that combined with the city planning. So it wasn't just um, uh, the uh, transport, it was also how a city would grow and um, what the impacts would be of um, pollution and putting buildings in the incorrect places and the relationship between different types of uh, buildings. Uh, more recently, I've used the MATLAB program, which was used um, in the COVID-19 simulations. And I used it on a kit that came from Arduino called the Arduino Engineering Kit. And uh, one of the things that uh, I used it for was um, modeling and simulating the um, performance of a self-balancing vehicle like this motorcycle. And um, uh, that was quite interesting, a very sophisticated um, simulation and development. Um, so the software, while you simulated it, you could um, make sure you're getting the right performance. And eventually you could then uh, transcode it. So it went into a Arduino computer to control a motorcycle. And in project management, uh, I've used a program called Microsoft Project and another one called At Risk. And the At Risk project was able to simulate the performance of your model. And it came out with outcomes like um, the most likely, worst case, and the best performance um, of a project. And um, today we're actually going to look at a program called NetLogo. And um, this program is maintained by Northwestern University in America. And it's an example of an agent base model. So you consider an agent just like a real estate agent does something on your behalf. So the agents can be almost anything. They can be um, molecules if you're looking at chemical reactions, or the agent can be the um, whole nuclear reactor, or it can be a car 
if you're looking at traffic simulation. So um, some of the samples that we'll look at um, include things like um, environmental models, traffic models, even games. And we can go back to the uh, Lunar Lander and recreate that in Net Logo. And again, we can also look at things like farming, spreading diseases. And one of the uh, quite exciting areas is how these simulations can be used to create music. So uh, if you go across to the Net Logo uh, website, you'll see that there's a whole um, library of models that you can uh, play with. And you don't have to code with these models. What you can do is just simply um, uh, use the models and see and see how they work. So um, what we're actually going to do, that's the software. We'll go up to the projects that we'll be working on today, which are up here. And these projects uh, will include looking at those samples and the samples will look at a climate change model and that the way that that performs, we might actually do that now. We'll look at the climate change model. Uh, if I click on this, and this is one of the aspects of using mind maps, that it's able to capture the URL of um, the item that I'm uh, interested in. And the other thing, it can expand out. So there's two ways you can access this model. One is download the whole Net Logo program. And if you do that, you'll get access to the models on your computer. And this is the model under Earth Science that we're going to use. And um, the alternative way to use it is just to click on this item and open the link. And uh, when we do that, uh, the model has been um, opened up for us. And here we get the climate change model. And if you actually look at its components, it's got the command center, which is this one on top. There's the code and there's information about the model. So in the command center, we can set up the project by pressing the setup button and we can go. Uh, and um, either now before we set up or um, later, we can change the brightness of sun, sunshine. Uh, we can have a look at the reflection of um, the ground we can add cloud and we can add carbon dioxide. Uh, so let's play around with the model. And what we're interested in is having a look at whether temperature increases and whether the CO2 level, the carbon dioxide level increases. So we'll set up the model and it sets up a graphics. So uh, right on top, we've got the uh, sky, which becomes blue. Then we have the green grass and the soil underneath that. So we're just going to set it up and we're going to go. So when the model is working, it shows rays from the sunlight and some of those rays have been reflected and others have been absorbed by um, carbon dioxide. So we, um, what we might do, we, we can actually see there's a bit of carbon dioxide at the moment and you can have a look at the global temperature increasing but I wonder what happens when we add more carbon dioxide. So we're now adding carbon dioxide. So you can see that the, that level of increase in the uh, temperature is, in, is um, going up a lot more steeply. And you can see the temperature gradually um, going up. So that, that's an example of running the model. And you, by observation, you can see what's happening uh, with the carbon dioxide and also the uh, temperature. So the temperature is gradually rising. The other aspect of the model is looking at the code. And if you open up the code window, you can see how it works. And uh, what I would suggest is that you might like to just go down and see if you can find how you might actually set up some of the agents. So you can see them here. There's the earth top, the sky top, um, and uh, the parameters of that are, uh, are set down here. And the final one, or the final window that you might like to look at is the model information. And it tells you what the objective is, how the model works, 
and, and things to try and observe. And if you're really uh, keen, you could go ahead and extend the model, um, perhaps by putting extra vegetation in to see if that makes a change. And this is an example of a fairly simple model uh, for climate change. So we go just go back, go back to our um, uh, uh, our um, mind map. Um, we've got some other examples that you can have a look at uh, besides climate change. The other one is forest fires. So some of the other models include traffic. And uh, we look at some of these. I've got about three or four models here that you can look at. And quite an interesting one is the um, control of a, um, traffic signals. So uh, you can um, extend this uh, model. So it works with real traffic signals uh, controlled by an Arduino computer. So if we open up that model, just now setting up the model. And um, here we're able to um, control some of the parameters of the vehicles like acceleration, uh, how many vehicles are coming from the north and how many from the southeast, uh, what the duration of the green and the yellow signals are. And uh, to set it up, we just press the setup button and we get an intersection. And right at the um, intersection, we've got the uh, traffic lights. So in the east-west direction, we've got a red signal. And in the north-south direction, we've got a green signal. So if we uh, want to set that up with uh, a standard speed limit, we can have a look at what happens to the model when we change the speed limits. So we'll just go. And you can see all the traffic's banking up when there's a red light and it lets the uh, traffic um, go. And what we're interested in, we don't want to keep the drivers waiting too long. So we can actually measure that overall and um, what the wait time is um, on the east and the west direction. So we can, we can have a look at that wait time and you can see how that's changing in time uh, with the east and west directions. So we'll just uh, close that. And what's interesting, you can do things like change the speed limit. So the speed limit's going to be um, higher now. And we can also uh, change things like um, the green cycle will actually make that much shorter. And if you do that, you'll notice that the, um, the queues are now building up and the wait time is going to be a lot longer. Okay, so that, that's another interesting uh, model. We'll go back to our mind map. And uh, the other model that we're going to look at today is um, a couple of games. And um, we'll look at the game of life in detail next week. But the one that um, we can go is back to the first game that I ever played. We can have a look at that model. We'll build it up on the computer. and we'll play the game. So we'll set it up. And when we set it up, we get a lander here, a lunar lander, and it's going to try and land on that platform over here. So there's acceleration. Um, and if you don't have enough thrust, uh, you could uh, land with too much acceleration and crash it. So uh, let, let, let's, um, the controls you've got, you can uh, change the thrust and you've got controls for the left and the right. And you can also use your uh, keyboard controls uh, for these too. So there's um, a J, K, and L. So uh, we might use the keyboard and we'll just leave the thrust as it is and we'll play the game. So well, let's go. So we're now going with descending. We'll uh, go to the left, we'll use a bit of thrust, go more to the left, and to see if we can land a bit more thrust. Uh, we've gone too far away. We have to make all, make, uh, see if we can come back to the right now. Here we go. 
a bit more thrust, we, otherwise we're going to crash land. Okay, so um, yeah, we've added too much thrust there. But you can actually see that this game is quite a useful one in training astronauts so they can land on the moon without crash landing. Uh, we're not going to quite make it. Uh, we died. Okay, so um, that's it for today. If um, you're interested, go to the um, references, download the Net Logo program, or play with some of the models online. And um, we'll just have a quick look what we might do next week. So next week, we're going to um, look at, uh, let's see what we'll do next week. Uh, we're going to look at some projects uh, with traffic projects. Okay, no, um, we'll just bring it down now. Here we go. So um, the projects we're going to look at, we'll look at some of those samples uh, this week. So we open those up. You can uh, select anyone you want to uh, and uh, observe how it works and uh, play with the model. If you're really keen, have a, a little look at the code which is running the model. Next week, we're going to do two things. We're going to look at uh, how simulation can be used in recycling. So this is the model, and we'll play this next time uh, we meet. And we'll also have a look at um, one of the first games that uh, try to um, bring a bit in a bit of realism. So in this particular game called Life, we'll simulate life or the, the growth of life um, where the uh, rules depend on how close you are to the neighbours and whether you're cooperating or competing with your neighbours. And uh, the colony can grow depending on obeying some rules. And those rules are reflected in the code. And we'll have a look at some of that code. Okay, so um, just looking at some of the references. Uh, what you can do is go, go to the NetLogo website, find out where it comes from, and um, perhaps you might even ask the library if you're really keen, you can get this book, which is written by the author of the uh, NetLogo program, and uh, it goes into a bit more detail on some of the uh, demo models. Okay, that's it for the time being. Uh, bye for now.